you know what? We're going to talk to Steve Kroll. Steve, you're a managing director at Moness Crespin Hart. All of our viewers, all you guys out there, you know Steve. You've seen him a lot of times. Steve, bull or bear? Bull. Why? We, well, first of all, realistic bull. We think the economy is having a little bit of a soft patch this summer, but stocks are very cheap, and we think the market can grind higher. Uh, but you have to be realistic because the macro problems out in the world in debt restructuring are going to compensate or overcompensate for what companies are actually doing right now, which is uh, doing pretty well. We have a lot of stocks that we think are attractive, but we think this year the rate of return on the market is not going to be that great, probably single digits. Steve, 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 how can you be a bull? How can you say it's just a soft patch, a little bump here? You sound like Austin Goolsby who said after the jobs report, eh, it's just a little bump here. I mean, the job market having a tough time. Housing continues to be not so great. We have people talking about a double dip. How can you say that? Well, Carol, uh, first of all, a lot of stocks, whether it's Microsoft, or UAL or Xerox are selling at 10 times earnings. They have replenished their balance sheets. The consumer has replenished the balance sheets. But as you said, the big problem is the macro. So we still think some well, stocks are very attractive and we think the earnings outlook is pretty good. But if, if they're not hiring, if companies aren't hiring, people can't spend, you know the vicious cycle, then companies get a little hesitant. I mean, that cycle's still going on here. Well, hiring is one thing that I worry about and that's why the unemployment rate is high. Earnings, where stocks usually move to, uh, are actually improving. We may have a little slowdown here in the summer, but you know, stocks at 10 times earnings, and most important, understand where are you going to put your money. Uh, money market funds are yielding zero, so we would rather have a company that's growing 10% and having uh, selling at 10 times earnings and a 3% yield. Hey, Steve, it's Julie here. We seem to be seeing increasingly sort of a disconnect here where the economic data is getting worse, but as you say, the earnings have held up. We've begun to get some earnings forecast cuts, particularly when you're talking about the cyclical sectors. Texas Instruments, the latest, a lot of well, retail companies have done that. Are, are we going to start to see that gap close where the earnings start to flag like the economy seems to be? Well, Julie, I think you're seeing that right now. You've had the market down seven days in a row. Finally, today we had a, a reflex, a uh, relief rally. Uh, but I think it's going to be a fairly difficult uh, sideways or down summer as some of these margin pressures on earnings take fold. But recognize where are you going to put your money. So corporations and the consumers have deleveraged. We still have the governments that have to deleverage. That's going to lower the economic growth rate from 3.5% to 2.5%. But still, stocks are cheap. All right, um, Julie raises a great point. Some of the earnings forecasts coming down. So all of a sudden, a market that looks like it's trading at 13 and a half times, suddenly it's trading at 14 times, 14 and a half as those earnings right. estimates come down, PE goes higher. Right. 100% correct. That's why I said I was a realistic bull. I do not think the market's going to be up double digits this year. I was in the business from 1969 to 1981, and the market went flat for 10 years. So I think we may go through a period of a year or two where we digest this problem, and earnings are going to be okay, not great, and the market can take the banks. They're talking about raising capital. To me, that's the greatest thing in the world. If the banks go back to doing what they did before, which is act as a bank, the multiples will go up. I like that. Hey, you know, guys, I want to bring in um, something we heard earlier from Sheila Baer, outgoing FDIC Chairman Baer, is speaking out about a lot of things today. She also called some bank executives idiotic. She also said she's worried about the economy. I want Steve to uh, actually listen up. And actually, we don't have it. But, Steve, what she said is she's worried about a double dip in housing. She worries more about the direction of the economy. I worry about source of, sources of revenue going forward because that's tied to the economy and borrowers not wanting to borrow. She brings up some legitimate co uh, concerns here. Well, I think housing is not going through a double dip. I think it's going through a slowdown. Also notice the mortgage rates down five weeks in a row. So that's going to limit the downside. The problem is everyone is expecting the world to be great. We just came off the biggest and the worst uh, financial meltdown, and I think things are recovering slowly but nicely. We, people's expectations are that everything has to be A+. Plus. We're not. We're in a B-minus economy and a B-minus market, and I think that's what we have to adjust to and, and think about for the next year and a half. Steve, if it's a B-minus, why not just sit in cash? And by the way, cash might not be the dollar. Might be the euro, might be an Aussie dollar. What's your thought? Well, cash, you get nothing. You're getting zero. And there are a lot of companies out there, some I mentioned earlier, United Airlines with a 30% free cash flow yield, Microsoft, which has been talked about uh, by a lot of people, some of the insurance brokers. Our analyst, Sal Alaka, has 14 or 15 buy ratings on a lot of the energy companies, which were up 30% this e year. E&P names, guys e are digging names, for Absolutely. And these stocks are up 30% this year. So you can make money in individual names. I just worry about the overall market. All right. And what about the dollar? 
dollar, <laughs> it's going through a, a love-hate relationship. I mean, if we raise interest rates, the dollar is going to do well. But I think the government is trying to debase the, the currency for, they have been for a couple of years and probably continuing. Hey guys, I want to go back to housing for a moment. And um, Steve, I'm going to get your thoughts in a moment, but Suzanne, you've been adding up some of the numbers on housing. What do you got here? Yeah, well, we saw housing stocks actually do pretty well today with the broader ma market. And what's interesting is the 30 rate mortgage, the mortgage rate on a 30 year mortgage actually fell to the lowest level this year, 4.49, according to Freddie Mac. And, and you got to wonder here, you have all these people talking about a double dip in housing. That's what the economic data is telling us. But then you have a lot of these home builders that are actually buying land. So, Steve, my question to you is, how do you play the housing stocks, if at all? Do we need to get through the summer and hope that the economy improves? Because we've seen all the losses this year really happen in the past 30 days in the housing index. Well, one of the best things to do is start talking to real estate agents, and they will tell you that business has picked up dramatically over the last six months. And some of the housing stocks are up 30 and 40 percent off the bottom. It's not nirvana. It's not back to 2007, thank God. But rates are down and housing will come back and things are things are not bad. I'm just amazed at how many people think that we have to be back to the greatest economy and, and the market at 15,000 after we've come through the uh, worst financial situation uh, ever. All right, I got to ask you about one of your crazier calls. I'm calling you out on this one, right? The U.S. losing its triple A rating. You said it a couple of months ago. Carol, I think I just heard you snicker. Was that right? No, well, you know, I can't snicker. I have to give Steve props because he said it to us early on. And then what was it? Early this year, we actually had, you know, talk from the ratings agencies that, you know, they're, they're kind of watching it out. So I have to give them props. I can't snicker. Well, Carol, thank you very much. But let, let's talk about what was in the paper uh, mm. a week ago. We were talking about a debt limit and possibly defaulting on the debt. And at the same time, someone saying that the U.S. is a triple A credit. Those statements don't exist together. So we think that the U.S. has to, uh, the rating has to get cut. And more importantly, they should raise the debt limit after they get a guarantee in the next year or two to cut spending. That's the biggest problem we have here and in most of the other countries but, around the world. Steve, don't you feel like, though, and I've been very critical of Washington, but don't you feel like they're starting to get things in place? They're really having no. a serious dialogue. You don't think so at all? No. I think the last budget uh, agreement was, they talked about $300 billion. It turned out to be... Uh, a non-event. I don't think it was anything when they when they did the numbers. No, I think you have to. One of the things we've been talking about for a long time is why not everybody, every department, cut five percent off each number and then start from there. But right now we're not. We're just arguing. Uh Everyone's arguing which areas they like and don't like, and uh, they're, they're going nowhere very fast. All right. You know, China doesn't have this problem. I mean, I wish we had some of the problems that China had, and that is uh, uh, certainly their growth. I mean, Sheila, they've been working to really slow down their growth, and we're starting to see signs of that slowdown, aren't we? Absolutely, Carolee. You know, people always talk about the economic indicators here slowing down, but you have to take a look at what's been coming out of China lately. So you take a look at some of the data. Industrial production, for example, rose by the smallest amount in almost a year. Retail sales growth also slowing. And then finally, those new loans climbing less than forecast. You know, Chinese stocks have really started to reflect a lot of this, down about 4% in the past six months. Steve, my question to you is, is this a soft landing? Is there something more here for investors to be uh, concerned about if the China growth machine turns off? Well, first of all, China is slowing down their machine themselves. Unlike us, ours is slowing or, or we're trying to speed it up ourselves. So we're coming at two different different approaches. China may have a slowdown. Probably they should because the growth rate of 10 or 12 percent is too fast. Uh, but the most important thing is five years from now or 10 years from now, China will be the engine of the world and they will continue to grow dramatically. All right. Bottom line, it sounds like you say focus on cash flow, whether it's United Airlines or an oil company. Absolutely. And in, uh, in, the, in the period the market was flat, there were stocks that went 20 and 30 percent both ways. Microsoft, United Airlines, Xerox, a number of other ones. Okay, Steve Kroll from Manesse Crespian Hart, great to have you. Carol, we'll be back right after the break. A whole lot more to talk about.